Hey guys, welcome back to another video and another opposition preview. The first Premier League game of the season is upon us. Uh, it just ended the Premier League season. What are you on about? Absolutely wild. But we are back in action. Uh, already got the first trophy in the bag. Obviously, the, the biggest trophy in the world, the Community Shield is here. Uh, but now real football actually starts. I've got um, this wonderful gentleman alongside me, Louis Beneventi. Uh, I got that right, didn't I? I think. Oh, you did. You better, you better, oh, better than I tried on our part. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Louis Beneventi, uh, according to his own Twitter bio, the best dressed man in football YouTube. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he'll give you a good trim, uh, a hairdresser, and of course, part of the Chelsea Echo and the side, uh, the sideline as well. Uh, how are you doing, my friend? Are you good? I'm a bad man. I'm a barber by trade, not a hairdresser. Don't get us confused with them, mate. They're more skilled than we are. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll have to test you out one day. I'll come to London for um for for a trim for a barber haircut. My son's obsessed Absolutely. with haircuts right now, which is adorable. He's only one and a half, and right? And like he walks past and he goes, "Haircut man," because he got it done once, and uh, he's obsessed with them. They're his favorite things in the world. You guys right. and bin men, so you're in a steamed company. That's it. Oh, oh, that wasn't even intentional. Well, there you go. There, there you go. I got my own title in there as a pun for once in actual the right <laughs> context. Um, anyway, City play Chelsea at the weekend, the first game of the season Sunday. We are away at Stamford Bridge and we've just done, obviously, a uh, chat with yourself for your, for your own um, podcast uh, or channel. I'm not sure where it's going, actually. Uh, Pod. But for your podcast, yeah. And yes. you were saying how famously you're quite negative um, about City versus Chelsea. But Potch did have City's number last season to an extent. Now it's been a weird, weird world for Chelsea. Like it's crazy. As an outsider, I have no idea how to how to make sense of it. But where's your head at going into the season before we get onto the game? I have zero expectations. It's fantastic. I love it. I've already set myself up to go onto Twitter when everyone's undoubtedly losing their mind and just do pure satire. I'm like, do you know what? I'm just not <laughs> going to get emotionally involved this year. Embrace it's not the worth chaos. It. Joker style. exactly. Exactly. And I noticed I got far more grey hairs last year than I have done in a long time. And I'm only 26. So I kind of realised, I went, right, lads, I think maybe it might be worth just reducing the stress, just enjoying the football and just <laughs> crying with laughter when things go perfectly wrong. It's like the back end of Breaking Bad. You know, when he, oh, if, yeah, yeah. If, you have, if, you have, if you haven't seen Breaking spoilers. Bad, you're going to get spoilers, yeah, spoilers, that's spoilers. It. spoilers. Uh, when all the money gets taken out from underneath the house, he just starts laughing. Yeah, that was me. About two weeks ago, you were we under sold. the floorboards in the in the crawl space. Actually, it was called crawl space yeah. that episode. Actually, uh, you were oh, in the yeah. crawl space of Stamford Bridge, just laughing. And funnily enough, all the other players that you got were down there with you as well, losing their mind hysterically. <laughs> 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 Not because they wanted to be down there, because there was nowhere else for them to go. Essentially, you know. So it was, uh, yeah. And that's the right place to right right place to be. I would argue. You know, if I was um, in your situation, I'd be doing the exact same thing. You've got to be you've got to be aware of the the silly whimsical nature of football and just embrace it I reckon um yeah mm. I think you're right to have no expectation as well because it could go any way couldn't it absolutely any way uh, how do you feel about the general the, the chaos around Chelsea because from the outside in it just looks mental like do you sense a plan or is it still feeling a bit wild for you guys I don't want to speak for everybody because I'm I'm not I think it's not it's unfair to do that but for me I know yeah. I see no understanding there I th I think for me, like when you're here and trust the process constantly, it, it becomes more like, you know, World War Two propaganda with the loose lips sink ships, you know, it just sinks <laughs> into your head and you're kind of sat there going, right, okay, well, let's just see what happens here then. Because what I see more than anything is sporting directors and I'd say one half of the ownership. I, I think Todd, Todd Bowley gets a lot of flack, but I do feel that he is – less to blame than others. He's still part of it, don't get me wrong, but I think Ben Adagbali and the sporting directors have more of a, a prominent impact on what's going on. Um, I see people that are backed into a corner at this point and they are so devout to this process that they've put in place that we've brought in a manager who's taken the job because it's Chelsea yeah. uh, and no, I mean, look, I, I, look, I want to see what happens with him this season. I, I have, I just, I'm very just indifferent to Enzo Maresca. Um, but I don't feel we've brought in an elite calibre. I think the quality of Chelsea over the past three years is just, just it's land. It's been a landslide of just yeah. rubbish. Um, it gets got worse. If you think about the three worst years kind of ago. Landslide. 
literally. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not, it's, you've got other landslides, avalanches, you know, there's loads of different ones, but, you know, <laughs> at least they're anything. fun. Terrifying, but fun, yeah, you know. Yeah, and this is it. This is it. It's like, I'm, I'm treating it like, do you remember that skateboarding game? Or not skateboarding, the snowboarding game. Was it, was it tricks or whatever it was? Like, yeah, that's, that's 20 tricky. years ago. That's the one. That's it. Um, I'm going to treat it like that. I'm, 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 I'm an N64 guy, so I was 1080 snowboarding, but I remember SX Tricky, yeah. What was it called yeah, that? It was so- something like that. That was the song. It's, da, 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 it's tricky. But yeah, great game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> but it's pretty much, yeah. Yeah, no, but I'm pretty much, I'm just, I just don't see any plan. Or I do see a plan, but I see a plan that doesn't work. It's very much treating players like it's, you know, the housing market or portfolios. It's great if you're Clear Lake and you've bought in a player for free from Benfica and then sold him for three million quid three years later, or you sold Carney Triple for over 20 to Palace, which is potentially going to happen. And there's all this sort of stuff where there are players at a pure profit, but then you're completely also tearing the soul out of a club and just basically doing it your way. I think the best way I've, I've described it, my, me and my dad had this conversation. He's been a season ticket holder at Chelsea since the 60s, right? And he... Yeah described it and uh, we, were, we were we were on holiday and we were chatting about it. he said say we're like you're uh, an italian paper company i'm not like dunder mifflin but you know i'm just using paper as an example that's in front of me um <laughs> but dunder mifflin come and buy you out right and you know but you know how to sell to the italian market you know what you're doing in terms of developing the brand in your area of expertise so premier league football european football you know what we're doing you know we are pretty set there's a few things that need tweaking but everything's pretty good right yeah but then the american company goes no in the u.s we do it this way so we're the best so this is how it has to be done and then completely tears up the playbook and then you get no results for three years but they're going why aren't we getting results because you ripped up the entire playbook and you've decided to your way that doesn't work um yeah I, I am, I look, I could be turning around to you in two years time, mate, and we could be absolutely unbelievable and the structure's there and the club's self-sustainable and it's in a good way, but I really do not see that happening because yeah. it's just loads of jargon, loads of buzzwords. Aren't we great at marketing? Look at us. When things are going well, we want to take credit for it. When things go wrong, silence, nothing. No yeah. ownership of the situation. So, I, I mean, look, I, I have, I could give you hours on this because it's like yeah, an I absolute it, yeah. joke. But you know, no, I I, I, so I have, I have no, I've no emotional connection right now. I'm like, do you know what? Like, let's just get get do what we need to do. Let's see what happens. Let's see how it develops. But everything that I grew up with and everything my dad grew up with and sort of I had to get over and say, well, choice didn't win anything for years. There was a culture and that culture was developed for a long time. It's off the pitch as well. Yeah. There's no understanding or representation of that culture at all. It's completely gone. Yeah, no, and I, I'm, I totally with you. I'm from the outside looking in. Look, I, I, I'm quite vocal on Twitter thinking Chelsea are an absolute shambles right now. And I don't think that's, I don't have any joy in saying that. I don't ultimately care that much, you know, but I, I mm. the way I care about it is, as as a sort of a humanist, really, uh, looking for the people perspective, that like, there is no way you can treat that many people as as commodities and it not blow up in your face. And, like the the fact that Chelsea are, are asked about selling some guy's time for three million a few years ago, like it gives you a shit, man. These are the bigger things. Chelsea are cha- Champions League winners against so my side a few years back. That is, you shouldn't be looking about. Oh, can we make some profit in five years or some players? You think how do we win the league? How do we get in the Champions League? All these things and and signing so many players and then then sort of being so willing to sell him a year or two later like the message it sends is one of instability and chaos while putting on stupid long contracts none of it makes any sense whatsoever to me it's just it's shooting randomly in different directions and hoping that you hit some kind of target and it's not a way to run a football club at all but you know um maybe i'm wrong wrong, wrong. maybe maybe it does work but to me it feels like it's just there is no soul to it, is the way I can describe it. And I'm not going to say Man City are this big soulless club, soul, soulful club as well, you know, because I understand billion dollar clubs do crazy things and they're detached from realities. But you've got to care about your players. Um, you've got to care about the people there. And there's been a total disregard, in my opinion, from the outside looking in of the staff, the process, the academy staff, the players that were there. I think it's all been thrown out like it's like it's a secondhand goods. And I think it's, I think it's scandalous, if I'm being honest. I think it's absolutely scandalous. And I think it's. Um, it is. But it is, it is. I think it's, I genuinely think, um, 
anyone defending it online is being absurd. And I see some Chelsea fans yeah. who are still sort of drinking the Kool Aid, and I think, come on, man! Like, it, it, I don't think people are ribbing on Chelsea because it's Chelsea. I think they're actually going, "This is ridiculous." I get, get go away with the ego of it all, and there is an ego to it, isn't there? In my oh opinion. no, absolutely. Well, I think the, the biggest issue with it is the fact that it's like. When you, me and Dan were actually talking about it on the pod this week, we were sort of saying like there's this whole Chelsea listen to the fans, but they'll listen to Twitter fans. And the biggest problem with that is you're going to have everyone and their sort of their mates that are 12 and under, if we're being brutally honest, that sort of sit there and go, oh, we've seen this compilation of this great player and he's we've got this fantastic Brazilian kid coming through. And it's like, that's all well and good. But yeah. where does he fit? How does the situation exactly. work? Doesn't matter. We, we we're on the dopamine rush of signing, 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 and it's just like, guys, can we just like pull it in a little bit here, please? Like it's it's the, the logic behind it. it. Might people might just say, oh well, you know, it's just because you're used to it in football, or you know, with the big thing I get is, oh, you're you got the match going fans versus the international fans, or the Cobham sexuals as they're called versus you know yeah. everyone else. It's like lads, like. I'm in the middle, right? I'm very much sitting there going, I understand why we're signing this player. I understand why you want to keep this player from the academy. I'm very much, it's, there's like, when people talk about Trevor Chalaber as an example, Conor Gallagher, I mean, Conor Gallagher is a whole different situation, but I think Trevor Chalaber yeah, is yeah. A, a very good example in a purely footballing context, right? Trevor Chalaber at the back end of last season, aside from Thiago Silva, was Chelsea's best centre-back. He was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The point was, was if, you, if you came in to replace Kyle Walker, I'd be happy. And that's how I feel as a City fan. I was like, he'd be great to cover that right inside. He's brilliant, athletic, wonderful, experienced. And there's, there's no reason for him to go over then, then, then be like, well, yeah, he was already here. Essentially, he's not ours. And that's I can't see any reason to treat him so poorly. And um, no, you're absolutely right. And like, I, I think the kids online um, are obsessed with transfers. I was saying with a video I've just done, actually, um, with Sam Ty about the season. Like, there's two seasons now. There's the actual football and there's the transfer window that you've got to win as well. And young people online, particularly obsessed with transfers because of FIFA yeah. team and all that kind of stuff. And like, he's, he's created a... a it, Transfers has become an industry, and we're and I, I'm involved in that, you know, and you are as well. We we make content content for a living, chatting about this stuff. But I'm aware that transfers do not mean success, you know. They are just a way of moving players around, and ultimately, players win your games, not transfers, you know. So like, there's this fetishization of it all, and I think Chelsea are the right now are the extreme example of just um, the grass is always green on the other side, absolutely to the point where. Everything's been stripped away. I just don't think it's good. But you have got a lot of players. And do you know what? You have still got some quality there. I actually mm-hmm. um, I was going through your your squad um, during my season preview. And there is still an awful lot of quality. There is. I mean, I look around and you, obviously you've got Nkunku. Hopefully his first full season, you've just signed Pedro Neto. Cole Palmer, a genius last season. Uh, Caicedo and Enzo and Lavia, quality players. We'll see how Juju Hall gets on as well. You know, uh, Cucurella's form at the, the Euro is really good. Gusto looks like a really good right back as well if James Evie doesn't get fit. Then you've got, you know, good players. Colwell, Fafana. Uh, looks like you don't read a Disarcy, maybe potentially. I don't know, but even though he's really good. Um, you've got quality there, clearly. Uh, Sterling as well, the experience. Madawake, unless you get rid of him again. There's obviously, like, good players there. So when you start to break down the squad, does, away from the noise, does the squad give you any reason to be hopeful like if you if, if you strip back all the nonsense around it you have that collection mm-hmm. of players and presume Maresk is competent are you reasonably happy with that squad I'm, I'm happy with the squad but I just don't know where they all fit yeah that's my biggest issue especially especially if Victor Ossiman does come in which is what's being touted at the moment yeah. you know he he comes in okay so where does Nkunku go we'll put Nkunku in the tent okay so who comes out of the midfield Lavia Enzo or Caicedo well we can't take out Caicedo and Enzo because they cost so much money but then Lavia is really but it's it's like this it's this constant knock-on effect because yeah. that's that's where I'm now looking at going oh right okay and then also bearing in mind we've got that Esteval Willian and Kendry Pires coming in for the right wing next summer so then we've just signed Pedro <laughs> Natal you've got Noni Madueke you've got this it's like where does everybody fit um, it's about keeping them all happy. I mean, purely from a footballing standpoint, I don't know how this is going to work because I'm assuming he's competent as a coach, Enzo Maresca. As a man manager, that we don't know. Because 
oh my god, the idea of because that's the twenty five, right? Roughly that you've said there. There's still another twenty knocking about at the minute in the youth squad <laughs> and other people, and you know, there's a and there's a lot of yeah. young players who needed somebody with experience, but their arm around the shoulder and go right. This is what we're going to do, which I thought Mauricio Pochettino was excellent at last year. Um, we are now in a position where, I mean, I feel like the squad's good. I feel like the coach is competent, but I just feel like there are teams that one, have more quality across their spine than we do. Two, have more experience. And three, will keep fit. I think the biggest issue with Chelsea over the past two, three years has been our injury record. Our injury record yeah. has been woeful. And I mean, terrible. So we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, if everyone can stay fit and Maresca is competent, uh, and I don't say that as a, as a, a to knock him, by the way, it's just purely because he's had yeah. one season of championship football. He's had half, what, well, well, didn't even have half a season at Parma. And in, you know, Leicester, he squeaked across the line and Palmer, he was gone very quickly. So, yeah. you know, it's it's not a great track record. Um, so we'll have to see what happens. Um, I, I just think that we're probably going to be a little bit lower than where we finished last year. So I can't like, see us going for chop top four. I think you probably switch places with United. You know, they were eight, you were six. I won't be surprised. Yeah. Like, maybe yeah. I'm wrong there, but we'll see. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? Because like, the perception from outside of Chelsea was that, and probably even Chelsea, that you started to turn it around towards the end of the season, Pochettino. Like, you looked reasonably competent, you know, and uh, the madness has been sort of reined in a little bit. So the fact that he's now United States manager, crazy in my personal opinion, but that's where we're at. Looking forward to the game. Um, obviously, we met in preseason. That game was, you know, I hope you can judge preseason uh, looking before two that day. And yeah, you had some chances as well. Uh, some of our young lads did really well. No Oscar Bob for us, who gave you a torrid time. Um, Harland, of course, was great. But how do you feel about this? It is at Stamford Bridge, though, Louis. So it's one of those things where last season you were good against us. And we, I think, yeah, you had our number last season. You know, and we struggled against you. And City do start slowly. We always do. We've got a lot of players not available. But how are you feeling about this game? And what sort of 11 are you expecting as well? I think the reason we did so well against you last year was because we were a polar opposite. We were chaos and you were control. <laughs> yeah. That's why, That's I, 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 by the end of the season, because we kind of, as you said, reined in the chaos a little bit, but it was still a little bit chaotic. I was quite enjoying Prochettino's football. Like It was kind of a case of there was that anger to it. And I, I like that. It's very, very Chelsea. I think if you look at yeah, yeah. previous managers aside from Ancelotti, you know, we've that's when Chelsea have been at their best. It's been vicious. Um, and now I, I'm not so sure. Uh, obviously, Maresca has been very, very quick to shut down the diet pep accusations. But, you know, we'll have to see how that goes this season because <laughs> it's all about now it's all about control. Um, I mean, I, I genuinely am just, I, I think we're going to concede within the first 10 minutes and I think we're going to lose the game 3 or 4 nil. Okay. I, I just don't see where I, I just have no confidence in us to to deliver because I mean I'm hoping we might revert more to type considering you guys will have more of the ball. I'm thinking well maybe we will be a bit more aggressive. Maybe we will you know go for it a little bit more. But then at the same time, everyone started using new jargon about positional play all the time and you know, controlling spaces and all that, and it makes me want to get in a bath a very nice warm bath with a toaster. Uh, so sometimes I'm sitting there going, okay, well, Go out comfortably lads, at least. Yeah, exactly. You know, it'd be nice and warm. Uh, but, you know, in terms of the team, I think you're looking at a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. Um, I think we're going to probably see Lavia and Caicedo rather than Caicedo and Enzo, purely yeah. because... Kai Seda, sorry, Enzo is a bit more like, he's like a faster Jorginho. He's yeah. great when you have the ball. When you don't have the ball, it's a little bit tough, but he can make things happen. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But realistically, also, Rhys James isn't playing. Ben Chilwell's not playing. He's probably going to play because he's now the vice captain, one of the vice captains. So I take that all back. Um, but, so, but in terms of the team, <laughs> you're going to see, yeah, I've, I've got to do this, but this, but this is the problem. <laughs> I can't tell you what the 11 is going to be because I'm there like, 
was it going to be this or how are you going to do that or is this going to happen? I'm like we were saying right now, mate. Seriously, it's it's you got so it, well. I mean, it's going to be Robert Sanchez in goal, <laughs> clown feet. Um, but he's great with his feet, apparently. I don't know what they've watched. Um, <laughs> right back, so you're have, Timberlands. Oh, or... mate, it's sometimes when you, when he he does that thing right, and I couldn't help but giggle when he did it sometimes last season. Before he makes a pass, even if it's like a five yard pass. You know when you were like really young at school and you had like the the football classes after school and they were teaching you to pass the ball, but because you were five and you could barely kick a ball, you did like this little run up before you went to pass it. He always oh, yeah, every, does this it was little the most effort, most effort yeah. you've ever seen ever. It's just, he always every time he's like and pass. It's like uh, it's, it's sort two of like yards. Reverse, <laughs> reverse oh, xenophobia. I'm pretty certain it's because he's Spanish and you play. <laughs> well, the reason people people are like he's good with his feet. He's like no. He's not that good, and if, oh, he played for Brighton as well, and he's Spanish. Yeah, but he also went on loan to Rochdale, you know. So like, I'm, you got we got to temper this a little bit more. Like, no, he's I don't rate him at all either. I think he's um, nah. he had a couple. Of, he did he did actually have a couple of games Spain, didn't he, a long time ago. But like, I don't rate him either. I think he's um, a really average keeper. Um, so he's gonna have a, he's gonna have a blind at the weekend. But yeah, it, mm. uh, left back Cucurella surely because he's obviously he was excellent. Yeah, yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be it'll be sparky at left back. I love I don't like I can't love he's 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 slowly worked his way into my heart. Like back end of last, I thought it was actually quite a good beginning of last season. Everyone was still being like, no, he's rubbish. I thought, I saw a slight change. And then by the end of the season, I was like, okay, this guy's, he's on it. Like he's, he's not bad, you know? And then he really worked his way into my heart with that Australia advert. That, that for me, I was like, yep, yeah, done. I'm happy with that. I can, I can. I've not seen I'll, it. I'll have to Google it. I, I mean, I I'll, send, I'll send it to you. I'll I literally guessed the lyrics. Someone mentioned it on the stream to me. I went, is it Australia uh, rhymed with paella by any chance? And they were like, yeah. I was like, oh, great. And is it, does he mention Umbrella in it? Or is it like, I, I just guessed it at one point. I was like, yeah, pretty much nailed it. Um, but fair play, self-awareness and all that. Um, yeah. Into, de- into defence, Cole Wolf and Farner, maybe? Yeah, well, that's that's oh, what apparently to- is going to be the starting pairing for this season uh, until Wesley Fafana undoubtedly has a 15th ACL injury. But it's fine. <laughs> we're going to we're gonna run him I'm into the ground. Out, but it's, 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 it's grim. Yeah. No, but it's true. He's right had... Back. Yeah, go start right back. You then got, I think it'll be, yeah, it'll be Enzo, Caicedo. I want to say Nkunku in the 10, just behind. And then we'll see, I reckon, Sterling on the left, Palmer on the right, and Jackson up front, which isn't a terrible okay. team. It's all right. No, no, it's a decent team. And um, how how's Dewsbury Hall got on during preseason? Because I know you said, I mean, like... he's, he's, he's been good. He's been all right. I think I think he's. I've not. Again, I've not really got any expectations for him. He feels like, well, like when Sari brought Jorginho from Napoli, it feels very similar. Where Kieran and Drewsby Hall knows exactly how Maresca plays, so he's now in the squad yeah, to sort yeah. of help get that move in. And he, he's he's done the simple stuff well, but he's not been. I've not sat there and gone, oh wow, what a player we've got. He's so outstanding. He's he's been in the right place at the right time done the right stuff he needs to do and I'm sort of going yep sweet thumbs up happy days I can I can crack on with that yeah um, absolutely uh, so I mean the team you said is it, it's not bad at all it's, in fact it's a pretty decent side I mean, and if it clicks you could give us a hard time you're still going for a, a comfortable loss though unfortunately oh yeah yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be down in the concourse <laughs> before the first half's over I need to get I need to beat the queues that's what I'll be doing <laughs> Louis, thank you so much, mate. Uh, I'm gonna have to crack on, uh, but thank you so much for joining me, Louis. Of course, um, excellent, uh, a, a, a rare kind of like you have a similar approach to football that I do. Where don't take it too seriously, man. I love it, but also enjoy it. And I think people get too too in the weeds of football. Like just enjoy it. It is entertainment fundamentally, uh, and I, I enjoy that approach, my friend. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been thank really, really appreciated. Um, we got there through various technical areas that you won't notice because we would have cut that out by the magic of the editing in Premiere Pro. Uh, but we got there in the end half an hour later. Thank you so much, mate. Uh, and mm-hmm. check out m- my appearance on... Um, is it on the Chelsea Echo or the sideline? It's, when I on, the the it's on the Chelsea Echo. So if you head across to our Twitter, you'll find... Uh, or my Twitter as well, you'll find the podcast preview. And it's on all good podcasting platforms. Unfortunately, you won't see my sexy face as much as you've seen it here. So if you've come for that, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but you'll you'll hear you know Stephen's voice as well. It's it's great, really. All it's, uh, good podcast yeah. films and all some bad ones too. So you should be able to find it. Uh, <laughs> Deezer. Guys, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ugh, ugh, I feel dirty. Guys, thanks for watching this video. Let me know in the predict- down in the comments what you make um, of this potential game. My preview will be out 
before or after this. I haven't decided when I'm putting this out yet. Thanks for watching. Of course, check out the big season preview, which at this point would have been uploaded um, in one big, massive, like literal four hour video if you want to watch that. Uh, wow. If not, I do not blame you whatsoever. Um, yeah, Louis has no idea what I'm on about. I did sections, podcast for each section, and I'm going to, I'm going to, compound it into one giant video see what youtube makes of it out of curiosity you might be like how do i treat this what does the algorithm do i'm curious but guys thanks for watching this subscribe if you need to the channel check out louis stuff uh it's wonderful uh passionate chelsea stuff and i'll catch you all in a bit thank you bye bye